I said there's rest in worship Oh, we love you, Lord Oh, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ We honor you, we worship you We praise you, we rest in you We magnify you, we adore you And we say you are God You're the God of the Bible you're the God of the universe. You're the God of all creation. And we thank you that you are our God. Come on, tell him you're my God. Oh, come on, come on, tell him you are my God. And so we lean on you today. Uh, we depend on you. We trust in you. We stand firm in your name. That regardless of what's going on, your name is the greatest power and because your name is the greatest power we will never be defeated upon the name of jesus christ our faith and our hope is built and we love your name to your people we need a word from you we need to hear from you today thank you that our ears are inclined to hear what the spirit is saying to the church thank you that your word removes all doubts your word removes all fears your word settles us and so we say let your will be done today let your will be done in this place and we give you glory and praise in advance in the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ it is so and it shall not be otherwise come on if you agree with that prayer clap your hands all ye people come on come on don't pity pat right here clap your hands all ye people and shout unto God with the voice of triumph glory to God hallelujah come on give the Lord praise one more time as you're clapping your hands Come on, make some stadium noise for the God of the Bible. Hold oh, the music. I, I don't know if you heard me, so let me rewind the tape and say it again. I said, make some stadium noise. Now, let me just tell you what stadium noise is. Stadium noise is when you go to that basketball or that football game and you have great and loud noise for a team that you have not, have not, don't have personal relationship with. And so today, the God of the Bible, in the midst of calamity, he deserves our best praise. I want you to turn up your volume and make some stadium noise for the God of the Bible. Come on, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it all the way up. I'm telling you, he's worthy of the praise. He's worthy. He's worthy of the glory. He still sits on the throne and he dwells in the midst of the praises of his people. I am so honored to be here today with the great people of God and look at you. You showed up today to the house of God. Glory to God because you know that there is safety in his house. I want you to help me to give God praise for my brother, this dynamic visionary and pastor, Superintendent Nathaniel Green. Come on, help me. Come on, help me, Grace. Come on, help me. I absolutely love you, man of God. I appreciate who you are as a gift to the body of Christ, as a man of integrity, a man of faith, and a man who loves his family. And I'm telling you, you are so blessed not to have a hireling. I wish I had some grace people to talk to me. You don't have a wool. You don't have someone that manipulates you behind the sacred desk. You have a great man of God that feed you the word of God and you ought to celebrate God for this gift. Glory to God. I'm honored to be behind the sacred desk and I cannot honor him without honoring his beautiful wife, this great woman of God. Can you help me to give God praise for Lady Green? Come on women, I need to hear you right now. 
thank God for you and for your family. And to all of the elders, all of you, the people of the Lord, I am not going to prolong the time. Certainly there is a word that God has given me for you, the people of God. And um, I believe that it is so vitally important that we hear the word of God in this hour and in this time. Thank God for all of you, the familiar faces that I see today that said, I'm coming to the house of the Lord to be a part of these services. Grab your Bibles and meet me in Psalm, the 91st chapter, verses 1 through 16. Psalm 91. I want to read this entire psalm, and so uh, I'm going to read through it. And if it's your custom to stand for the reading of God's word, let's do that today. Psalm, the 91st chapter verse 1 through 16 and I'm going to wait for everyone to unify the house let's all stand to the reading of God's word and if your neighbor don't have a Bible or iPhone or something let them carefully look on with you today because we want to fix our eyes on the word of God if you're there shout I'm ready for the word, for the word. he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but... It shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Verse number 9. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague Come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in some of thy ways, to keep thee in a little bit of your ways, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Verse 1 once more. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of of the Almighty. I want to preach to your spirits today from this topic, protection in perilous times. I know you're not touching anybody, but just pass it down your own and say, neighbor, there is protection in perilous times. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Protection in perilous times. My objective today my assignment it is to stir within this body of believers an unmovable unwavering faith in God that will see us through perilous times if you look at that word perilous it is also 
It also means dangerous or uncertain, shaky times. As we are sitting in this sanctuary, as the man of God has already said, and those that may be streaming or watching online, everything around us is unstable. I just flew in this morning from Memphis, Tennessee, and flew out on Thursday into uh, Raleigh-Durham Airport, that is typically a very busy airport. And as I walked through the airports on Thursday and today, the, 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 the host there at the, at the pl when you check in, and I can't think of his name, but you know, the air person that's, that takes your ID and lets you on through the plane. Who is it? The, the, not the TSA, but the person that stands at the gate, to let, the, the flight attendant, that person. He said on the announcement, he said, we have, over 100 empty seats on this plane, which is not typical during spring break. And so he said, wherever you want to sit today, it is perfectly okay. We are living in a day and time where we are spiritually, and I pray that you that have an ear will hear what the Spirit is saying to his church today. We are spiritually, we are governmentally, we are socially and economically located in the very epicenter of end times events. From the time that I grew up and came up through the church, the saints would say to me and say to us, Jesus is on his way back. 20 years ago, mother, they were saying Jesus is on his way back. Well, I want to tell you, and I want to just tell you again, that he is closer than we think he is to returning. All of the signs are pointing to the imminent return of Jesus Christ. We're looking at this coronavirus pandemic. It is shaking the world. It is shutting down nations. It's shutting down companies and communities and even churches and in this troubled time we've got to make sure that we have faith and hope in God we've got to have faith and hope in God faith is our belief in who God is but hope is believing that he will do what he said he would do it is the assurance people of God that all will be well no matter what circumstances we are facing our faith should translate into peace and in a world that does not understand this kind of peace believers understand that we have perfect peace because we keep our minds stayed on him I, I want to just lift this up to you today and I feel the unction of the Holy Ghost very strong if I don't get a chance to hoop there's a prophetic word that I believe that's going to settle you today and while the world is panicking you will be able to rest and be reassured that God is with us and he will not fail. The enemy, however, of our faith. Because I believe that our faith is being tested. I believe that God is surveying our churches. To see if we really believe what we've been preaching and singing about. See, it's one thing to say that you have faith. When you got money in the bank. Mm -hmm. It's one thing, my brother, to say that you have faith when there is nothing that threatens your faith. But faith really is tested and proven when it has been tried. Let me say it like this. A faith that has not been tested has not been proven. So God is saying to the church, do you really believe that I'm able to do 
what I said I would do. The enemy of our faith, however, it is fear. Fear is defined as anxiety that is caused by approaching danger. The Bible tells us, and we quote it verbatim, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, come on, help me church, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. And although God has not given us the spirit of fear, we see it in many cases in the Bible. Adam and his wife Eve hid themselves from the presence of the Almighty God because of fear. Yeah. Abraham denied Sarah as his wife and allowed her to be taken by the others because he feared his own life. Yeah. Peter denied knowing Jesus because he feared that he would also be tried and crucified as a result of association. The children of Israel who God brought out of Egypt and brought them to the border of the promised land. They allowed fear of the people in the land to keep them from possessing what already was theirs. So Satan knows that if he can put fear in our heart, we won't be able to please God. Come on Bible study students. The Bible tells us, but without it is impossible to please God because he that believe must believe that he and not only that he is but he is a rewarder of them that haphazardly seek him that seek him when you want to. No, no, no. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What I'm trying to tell you today is that faith and fear cannot coexist. It cannot coexist. One cancels out the other. So the devil today, he wants us to operate in fear. And to be paranoid, not just of this disease, because there are some women and men that are sitting here today and you are operating in fear. Not from the coronavirus. You are operating in fear because of the perception of other people. We can't get you to sing in the choir because you are afraid of what somebody is going to say. I'm going to need seven witnesses to talk back to me when I'm talking truth in here. We, we can't get you to serve in the kingdom of God because you are fearful that you won't measure up to the next person. In these day and times where jobs are shutting down, we can't get you to keep tithing, giving, because of fear. It's trying to dictate to you what to do with your money but i want you to throw your head back if you really believe it and shout the devil is a liar god has not given us the spirit of fear and so if god didn't give it to us why does it come from it comes from the devil it comes from the enemy of your purpose the enemy of your purpose which is satan will have you stuck on stupid will have you stuck in the same place y'all not talking now year after year because you are afraid to bust a move and then you're mad at the people who say i may not have the money i may not have all of the skill sets I may not have the right connections and I, I may not know what to do from A to Z. But what I do have is a mustard seed of faith. Oh, come on, come on, people of God. All it takes is a mustard seed. All it takes is little faith to get over into what God has for you. Would you just hop, hop, bump this your neighbor and tell him this is not the time to be afraid. Oh, no, 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 no. Y'all 
y'all ain't talking to nobody. I know you. I know. I know. I know we're using precautions, but just, just put it in the atmosphere around you and say, this is not the time to live into fear. We've got to step out and bust a move. Somebody shout, it's time to bust a move. Fear. And, and, and let me tell you, it's not the devil that has you stuck where you are. It's you allowing the devil. See, he can't. Uh, he does not have access unless we give it to him. Let me put my glasses on so I can see you in your faces today. I said he does not have access. He is not omnipresent. He is not at the same place at the same time. And so he is waiting on you to give him your passcode into your life. He is waiting on you to get up and speak words that live in your life. Some of you are living what you spoke last year you're living it now you spoken last year and you're living it now it goes something like this I'm broke busted and disgusted I, I, my, my, my head is killing me my back come on why do we go to the extreme my back is killing me if it ain't one thing it's you are living the words today that you spoke yesterday. And the devil don't have no new tricks. I I'm telling you, he's an old devil, as somebody would say. He he's an old devil. He doesn't have any new tricks. And so what he does is he studies you. He knows. He knows when you get up in faith. And when you get up intimidated, he knows. He knows when you've been praying and when you haven't. He knows. Y'all ain't talking. The Bible says that he goes to and fro through the earth seeking whom he may devour. And I tell you to send every spirit of fear back to the pit of hell from whence it came. People who are afraid of this virus are more apt to get it. Job said, the thing that I feared, come on, has come upon me. And so if you're thinking it, come on, if you're fearful of it, I'm telling you those things that you fear, you're going to reap that stuff. I dare you. I dare you to start changing your passcode. I dare you to start changing your language. I dare you to start changing what you say. I don't walk in fear. I walk in faith. And if God be for me, he's more than the world. Against me. Come on, people of faith. Come on, people of faith. Come on, people of faith. I know you got a good praise break, but what do you do when your feet stop moving? Can you live what you just praise God for in here? Somebody shout glory to God. Come on, shout glory to God. I heard the Lord tell me to tell you. He just said this to me. He says, it, 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 it's good for you to do it in here. But everybody can do it in here. Strike up the band. Give us some good shop music. If you brought an elephant in here, an elephant would begin to raise his trunk to the beat of music. And so faith that you say you have in here, when everybody else is around, it hasn't really been proven. No, it's when you get to your house and there's a devil in your house. Y'all ain't talking. And there's a spirit in your house. And there's a doctor's report in your house. Will you take this same shout in your house and prove that I really mean this thing? I heard the Lord, and I don't mean to be brutal, but I've got to be honest. I heard the Lord say to tell my church, it's time for you to put up or shut up. You talking a big game. You talking all bad on Facebook. Some of you have become Facebook preachers and you've not been licensed. You talk a big game. You know how to post the right scriptures. He says, but I want you to put up or shut up. I want you to believe it or leave it alone. I want you to come on in here and hold on or not. 
the time is out for us to talk about he's a healer he's a deliverer but every time you get sick you won't lay your hands on yourself and command na na mama no boshe and command your body to be made whole no 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 you can't tell me you have power when your coworker keeps complaining about migraine headaches and you keep peddling them pills when was the last time you said within yourself and he will give me power to lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover where is all this power that we say we have? Huh? Where, where is all this, this, this miracle signs and wonders that should be following us because we believe? And the Lord said to me to tell my church every chance I get, to, if you don't like this coronavirus, change it. See how y'all looked at me like that? That's because you don't really believe you have power. You, you really don't believe you have authority. He says, if you don't like it, you can change it. You're not waiting on me. I've already deputized you and gave you power. You're not waiting on God to come down and regulate it. He says, I'm waiting on my church to be the church. I'm waiting on, the, on all these sanctified people with collars and chains and big positions. Y'all ain't talking over here now. And big positions. You, you, you got all of this clout and, and you have all of this prestige, but you don't have no power. The Lord God rebuke you. We don't need pretty preachers. We don't need snatched waists. We don't need preachers with silver tongues. We need somebody with to change this thing and turn it around we're pitiful we're pitiful we can't cure headache we can't cure cancer and I'm not trying to take us back but I remember a day and time where crutches would be on our walls and wheelchairs would be on our walls come on I remember a day and time where they would bring dead babies to our churches. Devils would be cast out. And now we are counseling people that need to be cast out. Y'all ain't talking. I remember the day and time where the sinner ran to the church because he knew that there was some power that was going to snatch him out of the hands of the enemy. Where is your power? Where is your power? Where is your power? Where is your power, church? Your power is supposed to be demonstrated in times like these. They don't know the cure. Scientists are doing whatever they can do to try to get the cure. But I heard a preacher, I heard Bishop Dillard say that Christ is the cure for the crisis. Uh, let me rewind and say that again. Christ is the cure for the crisis. Would you just look at somebody? As a matter of fact, forget them. Look at you. And just put your hands on yourself. And say, you better get some power. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Say it until your spirit hears you. You can't be lukewarm right now. This is not the time for you to be indifferent. This is not the time for you to leave the church because of church hurt. You better get a good grip and you better hold on to the power. Power of God. We're singing, but do our songs have power? We have more fancy songs and more chords and more lyrics than we've ever had before. But those songs of old, it only had about two words. And that word was power. That's all they said. And before long, just, 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 just a few more times of singing power, Lord. Before long, the power of God. Before long, the power of God fell in the midst. And people who looked like the devil was on their back. Before long, they got up and started shouting. I'm telling you, we've gotten so fancy. But God said, tell my church, get back to the basics. Power! Then they would say, 
send it, send it. Yeah. Send it, send it. Come on. That was say, send your power. Send your power. Send your power. Send your power. 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 Just the drums. We need your power. Need your power. Need your power. Need your power. Send it, send it. Send it, send it. Send it, send it. Send it, send it. The power to walk right. Power to talk right. Power to live right. Power to give right. Power. Hey. Power. 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 I'm telling you. I got to get through this text. Hey, hey, hey. Throw your head back and shout power. Let me move. That's what you need in your house. That's what you need in your community. That's, when you, that's what you need in your bank account. You've got to have the power of God in full operation in your life. Throw your head back one more time and say, I need his power. Yes. Let me get through, through this text. Mm. God said, tell my church, I want my church back. I want my church back. I want my church back. You have church on your doors. But are you demonstrating? Are you demonstrating what I call my church to be? Do you have power? Be seated. Let me, let me move. I, I, I got to give you this because the Lord gave it to me. Hey. Oh, 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 Lord. Hey, 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 hey. We don't want power with man. We don't want powerful positions. We don't want power at the job. We don't want power in the community. But we want your power. Somebody shout, I want his power. Yes. Psalm. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Lean in, lean in, lean in, lean in, lean in. You got to want power more than you want your necessary food or water. You got to want power. You got to want his power more than you want anything. Psalm 91, let me get through here. It is among the most popular chapters in the book of Psalms. And people love to read this psalm, especially in a time of crisis. But in the next few moments that I have up here, I want to examine the fine print of this scripture. I want to examine the fine print of this text. It begins with a powerful statement that describes who this psalm applies to. He that dwelleth in the secret place, place 
of the Most High. Right off the top, my brothers and my sisters, of this, this unknown author of this psalm makes it clear who God will protect. It didn't say he that is a part of an organization. It didn't say he that has a title or position. The text says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. This text is telling us that God protects his people. He will protect those who choose to live with him and act upon that decision. While it is true that we serve a God that can protect anyone whom he chooses, those who constantly live a life close to God will receive this promise. They can live in peace and serenity and security because of God's assurance that they will be protected. Notice in the text, he says, he who dwells didn't say he who dwelt and it didn't say he who will dwell it is presence tense that word dwells it comes from the hebrew word yeshab that word means to sit down it means to settle it means to remain it means to inhabit and i want to tell you today while i have your attention there is a major difference between dwelling and dropping by. There is a major difference between dwelling and dropping by. Can I unpack this just a little bit? Uh, the, the home that I live in and pay my monthly bills to, it is my dwelling place because my name is on it. I've got the keys. I park my car in the garage. I get the benefits because it is my dwelling place. I have times, my brother, that people drop by. It's not often because people feel like when they drive to McKinney, they're going out of the country. But I have people so often that will drop by. And when they drop in, they don't have the luxury to bring their clothes and put them in my closet because it's not their dwelling place. They, they, don't, they can't park their car in my garage because it's not their dwelling place. They, they, they don't get the privilege of opening up my refrigerator. My refrigerator and, and going in because it is not their dwelling place. The same in the natural, the same in the spirit. Those that occasionally drop in the house of God should not expect to receive the same benefits as those that dwell in the secret place. I'm getting ready to lose a church right here because a few of you all drop in every now and again and you think that we should give you celebration because you drop in. Well, drop on in and God may touch you. But that dwell here we sit we sit, we rest we are planted we expect to receive different results not for those who have not made the decision yet to dwell with him and everybody is quoting this scripture during this coronavirus. But I, I want to ask you, are you dwelling or did you just drop in? Come on, come on. I know some of y'all are mad at me now because you thought that this was applicable for you. It is only applicable for those who say, I'm going to stay in God and he's going to stay in me. It is only applicable for those who say, my heart belongs to him. And not just my heart, but my mind, my body, my goings and my comings. I'm dwelling and I will not be moved. Now this is getting ready to disqualify some of you all. Because you are what I call casual Christians. I'm going to need some security to walk me out after this. You are what I call casual 
Christians, you only lift up your hands when they're singing your favorite song. <laughs> you only show up. You only serve when it's a possibility that the pastor will promote you. Here. You, you only engage when there is something that's in it for you. You are casual. You casual. You casually serve. You casually come. The pastor has to put an APB out on you and try to figure out where you are. But when you come, you want to be wonderful and grand. I'm telling you, we're living in a day and time where we have casual and not committed Christians. But the promise is not for casual Christians. The promise is for people who are committed good times and bad times y'all ain't talking now when it feel good when it don't I just heard this when the pastor corrects you when he sits you down when he silences you y'all ain't talking now because we don't have that a lot in the church but I said when he corrects you because the pastor is not your friend he is your shepherd so what does what will you do when he tell you to have a seat what will you do when he tells you to turn in your license what will he do to tell you you ain't singing on the choir because you still have too much of the world in you no you gonna get up and you gonna go to the church down the corner that don't have standards y'all ain't talking now that they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't hold you hold you accountable for your actions when I grew up man of God when I grew up when we got up to testify and we hadn't been to church for a few weeks or even the last service we would get up and testify say give an honor to God give an honor whatever that means give an honor we just run words together back there give honor to God who is the head of my life I want to thank God for being here today and after being here I'm saved sanctified filled with the Holy Ghost that with a mighty burning fire come on let me testify been saved all day long no evil have I done sanctified and holy no evil but right after that he would say I want to give an account of my absence now you expect the pastor to text you or call you and you say he don't care about you when he don't call you or when he don't check on you I came to kill some demons in here you, you say don't nobody care about you when 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 they don't call you when they don't find you when they not pacifying you but I'm telling you you have to give an account ah you don't just say on your job you ain't call me no you call in and tell them and report y'all ain't talking now and tell them I won't be in today and then they want to know why won't you be in and you tell them I won't be in because I'm sick but I'll be back in a few days and if you don't show up in a few days they will fire you for job abandonment but you're so casual and you think God is going to bless you he that dwelleth in the secret place tell me how much time I have I'll wrap it up you shall abide under the shadow of the almighty the secret place have you ever thought why the secret place God will not just shelter his people in the open court or just in the major population but God will shelter his people in the secret place the secret place people of God it is a private and reserved place the secret place is a place where God himself withdraws to be alone and God is willing to share with his people even the most private and exclusive part of his dwelling area I want you to know this the secret place can be also a difficult place to find. It is something that is not known to most people. Why? Because it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of sacrifice for a person to find and stay in the secret place. But when you find it, you will say to yourself, 
it was worth it all. Can I preach this today? So what is the one thing that has caused us to no longer desire to be in the secret place? It is something that got Israel in trouble. It is called idolatry. I'm trying to tell you how to stay under the, in the secret place. I'm trying to tell you how to get this protection from plagues and diseases. It is idolatry. Joshua 24 and 23 said, Now therefore, he said, put away the foreign gods which are among you and incline your ear and your heart to the Lord God of Israel. 1 John 5 and 21 said, Little children, keep yourselves from idols. If you go back and look at the history of Israel, when they were in Egypt, they served idol gods. And although God delivered them from Egypt, they said, Lord, Lord, on their lips. But in their hearts, they had a plethora of other gods. I'm not going to expect for you to say a lot of amens right here, but I'm coming down your road. I'm telling you, idolatry is still alive in our lives. We don't have wooden images. We don't have golden calves. But you do have something called Facebook. See how y'all got quiet. We do have something called social media. An idol, people of God, it is anything that you put on side of God or above him. It is what you have given your time and your devotion to. And so the reason why you say you don't have time to pray it's because your time is spent. Y'all ain't talking now. I wish I had that same church that was talking about power a few moments ago. Because your time is spent on Facebook. You wake up looking for your phone. Y'all ain't talking now. I'm going to preach in here whether you say amen. And I believe I'm going to come back because I, we got to have the truth now. Uh, you, you wake up on your Facebook. Scrolling, posting pictures, you scroll, you got time, and if you got an iPhone, it'll tell you how much screen time, y'all, how much screen time you've been using, and isn't it interesting that we can use seven hours of screen time, but we don't have 45 minutes to come to church and pray. Come on, church, keep talking to me right here. Isn't it interesting that your iPhone has become your idol? And that's why you can't dwell in the secret place. Because everything else has your attention. Everything else is pulling at you. Y'all ain't talking now. Everything else that don't have nothing to do with you. There are distractions and devices that the enemy has set in your path. And before you know it, the whole day has gone past and you ain't read one scripture. Come on, talk to me now. I know this is, I know this is tough going down. It's like castor oil. And when my mama gave me castor oil, I didn't like the taste. But she said, if you take it, it'll clean you out. And I'm telling you, there are some things that God has for you. But you got to get clean on the inside. You got to get clean on the inside. You got to take this word, even if it's bitter, and swallow it and say, Lord, help me. Idolatry. We have functional gods. We have the God of power. We have the God of pleasure. Where you won't come to church, but you'll go to the game. Don't know if this microphone is on. You, you want church in 90 minutes, but you'll sit at the beauty shop and get bundles in your hair for three hours. Y'all ain't talking now. Come on, Zion. I came to challenge you today. If you don't shout, we don't need another shout. You can shout at home. You need the word of God to pull you through these perilous times. How can we say we need God, but we're not willing to go where he is? It's a secret place. In good homes and good homes and in older homes, they have doors that are called, it's a, it's a secret door. 
And look at it to the, by the naked eye, you would not be able to tell because it looks like all of the other panels on the wall. But the owner of that house knows that if they push it the right way, in time of trouble, if there's ever a raid in their house, everybody else may not know where it is, woman of God, but there's a secret place that they can go behind and the devil and the enemy won't be able to find them. You want to know why I'm not afraid of this coronavirus? It is because I am in the secret place. Don't hate on me. I'm telling you, I'm not perfect. I'm telling you, I have my proclivities. I have my faults, but I'm determined to be where God is and if God ain't there I don't want to be there I want to be where God is I want to be where he's speaking I want to be where he's moving I want to be where he's healing I want to be in the secret place and isn't it a sad thing that only half of us will leave this church and say I'm going to get in his face while the other half will continue to do business because your cell phone is so important come on single women this is not the day and time for you to be sitting by idly asking God where is your boo y'all ain't talking now yeah it ain't nothing wrong with being married but this is not the day and time to be chasing after a man y'all ain't talking now that this is not the time to be hanging out in the clubs y'all not talking this is not the time to be social drinkers y'all not talking now this is not the time to be dropping it like it's hot stand down there till it's cold this is not that time it's time for you to hide yourself in the secret place Get somewhere and get hidden in God. Get somewhere and get hidden in him. When they ask you what you've been doing, girl, tell them I'm hiding. I heard the Lord say, tell my people it's hide and seek time. Ah, it's hide and seek time. There was a day and time where we played that game. And one person would hide. And the other person would count. And they would say, one, two, three. Whoever I touch is out, O-U-T, out. And they would come to seek you. And I'm telling you, God said, to tell my church it's hide and seek time hide out in my word hide out in prayer hide out and fast seek me like you never sought me before and stop seeking my hand stop seeking a miracle stop seeking cash cars and cribs and seek my will somebody shout yes idolatry has caused us to go after things and God says I'm not in the things huh. I'm not in the things can I tell the preachers can I tell the preachers can I tell the missionaries can I tell the evangelists can I can I tell itinerant ministers and people in ministry this is not the day and time and never has it been but especially not now to kiss up for the next platform Y'all ain't talking now. Uh -uh. This is not the time to rub shoulders with who's who. To try to get on the next platform. I, I want to tell you, I want to be very transparent. I want to be very transparent as God has been taking me where he wants to take me. And I've had some people to call me and ask me, how did you, how did you get there? How did you get that open door? And I said to them, God told me 11 years ago when he made me a promise concerning what he would do with me in ministry. And I walked out of that church and I said, God, how are you going to do that? And he said to me, he says, you never have to be prepared about, you never have to worry about how just be prepared for when and so while everybody else was kissing up while everybody else was marketing themselves while everybody else was passing out cards y'all ain't talking while everybody was saying put me on I was in my closet every Tuesday and Friday for the last 11 years calling on God to help this nation and God says I'm getting ready to promote the people and I don't care who don't know your name I'm getting ready to promote you you won't have to self promote I feel like preaching now you won't have to market you won't have to gimmick you won't have to sleep your way to the top but if you dwell in the secret place of the most high God I'm getting ready to cause your name to be great I'm getting ready to call people to call 
your house, but it's going to come when you're in the secret place. High five and pump somebody and tell them, get in there. Get in there. Get in there. I'm done here. I'm done here. The Lord said, tell my people to renew your faith. Tell my people to believe me like you used to. When you didn't have nothing but peanut butter and jelly, you believed that I was going to make a way. Now that you have a little money, now that you have options, you stop believing me like you used to. But he said, renew your faith. And the quickest way to renew your faith is to do a fact check. Let me slow down. The quickest way to renew your faith it is to do a fact check. You may not know what that is, but let me tell you what a fact check is. It simply means that you are verifying the factual accuracy which confirms the truth in a piece of writing, speech, or article. And so the Lord said, tell my people to do a quick fact check. While I close this message, he said, fact check. Am I still a healer? Am I still a healer? Fact check that. The Bible says there was a woman in Luke 13 and 11 who had been crippled by spirit of infirmity for 18 years. And she was bent over and could in no wise lift up herself but when Jesus saw that woman he laid his hands on her and said woman be thou loose from thine infirmity that check it has God healed you in the last three months in the last 12 months I don't have a witness in here has he healed you regulated your blood pressure brought it down got rid of migraines he's still a healer somebody shout yes somebody shout yes is he a keeper let's fact check it the bible tells us in psalm 121 i will lift up mine eyes to the hills from which cometh my help my help comes from the lord he made heaven and earth he will not suffer that but to be moved he that keepeth thee will not slumber behold he that keepeth israel will neither slumber nor sleep the lord is my keeper has he ever kept you when a car accident was getting ready to happen he's better than your security system in your house somebody shout yes somebody shout yes is he still a deliverer i said is he still a deliverer that check it psalm 18 and 2 the lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer my god my strength and my shield and whom will i trust he's my buckler he's the horn of my salvation he's my high tower somebody shout it out Renew your faith. You got your eyes on this coronavirus. You got your eyes on the economy. But he says, press play on my resume. Press play on my records. Did I make a way last year? Did I make a way for you? Y'all ain't talking now. Did I bring you out? Did I cause you to prosper? I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'll never, I'll never, I'll never change. Somebody shout, he's dependable. Somebody shout, he's trustworthy. Somebody shout, he's God. Clap your hands again and pray. standing I'm done I'm done I'm done I'm done I'm done 
He said, tell my people, fact check. Go back in my word. Look at your life. Look at the things that people said you would not come out of. Some of you have had terminal illnesses. They gave you a certain amount of time to live. But look at you. You outlive the report of the doctor. Isn't it interesting that we get into what seems to be a new crisis and we forgot that he's still the same God. I said he's still the same God. He said tell my people to renew my renew their faith. Get in my word. We're going to make it. You can't be a casual Bible reader. As a matter of fact, there's nowhere in scripture, pastor, that the Bible says, read my word. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. When you see it, when you find it, let your pastor know and he'll let me know. There's nowhere in scripture where he says, read my word. No, he says, study my word for in it you have life get in this word saints i know you're reading your your morning devotionals but you're just reading through it study it this is the only thing that's going to keep us if you want to know what's going to be on tomorrow's news this word has already told you Come on. This stuff that we're going through, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, catch, you off, it wouldn't catch, catch you off guard if you were committed to his word. Get back on your knees. It's going to sound like I'm cussing right through here. Get back down on your knees. Some of you need to get on your faces. You need to humble yourself before God. You need to reestablish your prayer time. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. This is not the time for people to be begging you to come to prayer. Where is your secret closet? Hmm? You remember how you prayed when you first got saved? Come on, come on, come on. You remember how you just waited on God? Yeah, that's it, my brother. That hunger and that thirst after God and we say God I mean I have a lot of stuff but as long as I have you I know I have everything I need change your appetite we're living in perilous times and can I tell you this is the beginning of sorrow this is the beginning this is in the scripture 2nd Timothy 2nd second, second chapter verses 1 through 7 this, this is the beginning of times right here this is the beginning of times of perilous times that are coming up on the earth and if you think this virus is something, what are you going to do when the rapture comes and you're not saved? Don't be left down here when the rapture comes. If I were you today, right where you are, if I were you today, I would say to God, God, I got to get back in the secret place. It's going to cost me giving up some things giving up some people it's going to cost some people to tell me you're changing and your response is yes because I got to get in this secret place it's going to cause some people to say you uppity and you think you're wonderful tell them ain't none of that true I just know where my help comes from while the world is looking to the president and the government I'm telling you when the government shuts down and as they're shutting down day by day your bank account ain't gonna be able to get you through this you're gonna have to depend on the supernatural come on come on come on I said you're gonna have to depend on the supernatural and God says tell my church today come away with me consecrate yourself sanctify yourself give up the world tell the world I'm giving you back your stuff 
tell the world I'm giving you back your stuff come on what would it profit the world what would it profit a man to gain the whole wide world and lose your soul I'm making a massive appeal today right where you are there is protection in perilous times but there's a prerequisite he said he that dwelleth stays there in the secret place of the most high that was one more verse he says he shall he that set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him I will set him on high because he hath known my name. I want every person in here right where you are, if you would be honest, and that's majority of us in here, there's no judgment. We all trying to go higher in God and deeper in him. God, I've not been in the secret place. I've been everywhere else. I'm so consumed with my business. Come on, ministry people. It is so easy to do ministry and leave God out of the equation I want to come back to that secret place I want you to just begin to lift your hands all over this church some of you will feel led to come down and bow at this altar come right on come right on come right on I, I gotta get back in that place where I loved him more than anything come quickly if you're coming I gotta get back in that place where he was not my last resort he's my everything if you're coming come if you're coming come even if you spread out if you're coming you say woman of God I miss I'm missing something through here I'm missing his presence come on right where you are begin to lift up your hands and let that hunger for God supersede anything Lord you supersede you super and I'm on no bullshit you supersede anything here we are today as your church we've been inspected by your word your word has found us and Lord we will say we've not been in that place we've been so busy so Lord, today, back in that place, higher than anything, you have our attention. Sanctify us, Lord. Those things that are in our hearts, those idols that we have obstructed in our hearts that we have that we have uh, aligned in our hearts over you or beside you come on church come on be honest before him search us today search us shine the light from heaven on our souls here we are here we are unclean here we are God here we are indifferent here we are lukewarm come on come on come on reach for him reach for him reach for him reach for him here we are God admitting that we need you in days and times like this what we've been doing has not been working oh God we're returning back to you with all of our heart with all of our might with all of our strength we're putting you first everything else can wait and I'm on name is shine everything else can wait come on just tell him that everything else everything else can wait everything else can wait everything else can wait come on people of God I can't do this for you today you got to reach for him you got to want him you got to want him there has to be a hunger there has to be a hunger there has to be a hunger Lord we need you we depend on you Lord hallelujah you're our hiding place you're our shelter in the time of storm and father if you take your spirit from us where will we go oh God oh God let us pick up a weeping and a wailing between the porch and the altar 
Messiah. Let our eyes gush out with tears and ask that you would spare the nation. Spare, Lord, spare, spare, spare. Spare, Lord, spare, spare. Spare, Spare, Lord, turn this thing around. Turn it around. seriousness of this matter turn this thing around you're able Lord you're able to turn it you're able to turn it you're able to turn it you told us if we your people would seek your face and humble ourselves humble ourselves and seek your face here we are God humbling ourselves we're too proud Lord. we're too we got too much pride in us we're humbling ourselves, God. We're too haughty. We're humbling ourselves, God. We think more highly of ourselves than we should. We're humbling ourselves before your hand. And you told us if we would humble ourselves and seek your face, turn from our wicked ways, we're turning. Come on, intercessors. Come on, people of God. I can't pray you through this. You got to reach for him. Come on, you got to reach for him. Come on, you got to reach for him. Reach for him like you used to. Reach for him like you used to. Reach for him like you used to. From my soul, I'm reaching. Help us, God. 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 You're the only help we know. You're the only answer. You're the only help we know. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us, help us Lord. Help us. 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 Your strong hand of deliverance. Your strong hand of salvation. Your strong hand of healing.
forgive us, Lord. Have mercy on us. Send the death angel. Send the death angel the other way. Stay the hand of the death angel. Come on, pray, saints. Pray, pray, pray. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Stay the hand of the death angel. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over our borders. Hold the music. He said, I want to hear your voice. We plead your blood. Over every church. Over every community. We plead your blood. Come on, rise it up. Come on, rise it up. Come on, rise it up. Your blood be applied. Your blood be applied. We turn the terrorist attack. We cancel the terrorist attack. While we have our eyes on this coronavirus. Hear me, people of God. While we are distracted by this virus. I saw Russia plotting. I saw Russia planning. I saw missiles getting ready to be launched. But God. Here we all are. Here we all are. We're waking up out of our slumber. Come on, let the priests weep between the porch and the altar. Come on, let the women wail. And the men come on. Here we are, Lord. Turn it. He's up about sick as you. Turn it. Turn it. While we pray. 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 Turn it. Every missile. Every attack. Every plot of the enemy. Jesus. We call on your name. Jesus. Peace, Lord. Peace, Lord. Peace, Lord. Peace, 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 your peace, your peace, your peace, your peace, your peace, your peace. Your peace, your peace, your peace, your peace, your peace. Your peace, your peace, your peace, your peace, your peace. It's not in the military. Our confidence is not in the systems of this world. Your peace. Here we are, Lord. Take us back. 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 Here we come, Lord. We're coming back. We're coming back to you, Lord. We're coming back to you, Lord. We're coming back to you, Lord. Down on our faces. Down on our knees. Back to your word. We're coming back to you, Lord. And we won't let you go this time. <laughs> we won't let you go.
let you go this time. <laughs> We won't let you go this time, Lord. We won't let you go this time, Lord. We won't let you go. We won't let you go, Lord. We won't let you go, Lord. We won't let you go. 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 Oh, we won't let you go. We won't let you go. We won't let you go. <laughs> we surrender to you, Lord. <laughs> we surrender to you, Lord. <laughs> we surrender our dreams. We surrender our ambitions. We surrender, God, our aspirations. God, yes, we want to be successful, but we don't want it without you. You told us if we seek your face, seek your verse. Ah, God, seek your kingdom. All your righteousness, Lord. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All of the things we need will be added unto us. It's in you, Lord, that we live and move and have our very being. And we lift up holy hands. <laughs> in our mind, yes, we lift up holy hands without wrath or doubting. We say you're God. <laughs> we say you're God. <laughs> we cry out for this nation. <laughs> we cry out for our communities. <laughs> we cry out for our children. <laughs> the world wants to destroy our children. <laughs> We call them into your identity, their identity in you. We call them out of perversion. Lord, while we have your attention, save our children. Save them from their selves. Save them from their decisions. Save them from that car ride that they should not be taking. Save them while they're trying to deal drugs. Save our children. Throw out the lifeline, Lord. Restore our families. <laughs> Restore our love for one another, Lord. Oh, God. We become so impatient and so bitter. So easily offended. Restore our love, God. Help us to be patient with one another. Help us to bear one another burdens. He shandayadabababamandoboboshi. Help us to be the arms and the feet. That each other needs in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, wherever you are, just begin to lift up your hands to the Lord. Lift up your hands to the Lord. I feel his help. I feel his strength. Come on, rest in him. 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 We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. For we know that you hear us. And if you hear us, you will answer. Thank you for the intercessor arising. Strengthen this preacher. 
Ishanda yara ba 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 shite na 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 ma 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 no ba 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 shi. Strengthen this modern day David. Ida ma 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 ba ba shi ya ma 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 ya ma ba shi na ya ma ma ye shi ya ba ba ma so. Cover his mind. Kada ba mo shi. Cover his emotions. Ida ma 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 ba shi. Ira baba sheke na mama 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 ndi o baba baba osi esha Ita mama 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 ndi baba osi Everything you show them shall surely come to pass Everything you show them shall surely come to pass Ita mama 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 ndi o basha Strengthen his resolve na baba osi ke to stand for your God cover his family cover his wife Cover this church. Lord, we thank you that you will continue to send souls from the north, south, east, and the west. And they will find this place as a beacon of light and hope. Lift up your hands in his presence. Knowing that it is well. Come on, open your mouth. Come on, all over this building. Give him glory, give him glory, give him glory for restoring you. Restoring your mind, restoring your spirit, restoring your will, restoring your desire. And we give you glory and we give you praise. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, let the people of God praise him. Come on, let the people of God praise him. Come on, let the people of God praise him. There's a sweet presence of the Lord in this place. Come on, aren't you glad? that he didn't leave you where you were aren't you glad that you've recommitted your life and your time to him come on let the people of god praise him i prophesy that while the world is in an uproar the saints of god will enter now into a season of rest and restoration. People around you are going to ask you how you got that peace. Why are you so calm? And your response is going to be, I know who my God is. I need to find some people that say, I'm in the secret place now. Come on. I want to I see your hands. Come on, if you really mean it. I'm going to stay in the secret place. I'm going to dwell there. I'm not going to let nothing snatch me out of my consecration with God come on take your hands and clap them as loud as you can because of what the Lord has done and then I'm my mind no more hallelujah 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 there's victory in this house bring me my wallet Rhonda I want to be the first person I believe with all of my heart man of God, woman of God, people of God, I believe with all my heart that within the next 72 hours, we're going to see this thing turn. We're going to see this thing turn. I need to find some faith people here now. Come on, don't, don't, don't you doubt God. The prayers that we just prayed, God heard them and he's going to answer within the next 72 hours. We're going to see some things change. Come on. You better grab hold to that word within the next 72 hours. You're going to see some things change. You're going to see some changes. You're going to see some changes. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, your job and all of these things, schools may be shutting down. But the Lord said, tell my people, don't you worry. You're going to be sustained. You're going to be sustained. Come on. If you don't believe me, ask Israel. He fed them manna. And they looked at that thing and said, what is this? It was something uncommon. I'm living under the promises of God. I want to do this and I want to do this quickly. I want to challenge every person in here today to sow a $72 seed. And I don't want you to delay. I want you to stand up on your feet fast. I want you to sow a $72 seed. I want to challenge you today. Glory to God. Because I believe this is the word of the Lord you know me I've been here you know I don't preach for money glory to God 
I'm not here to rape the people of God or manipulate you. But I believe that restoration comes with seed sowing. Come on, talk to me, somebody. There are others of you, the Lord is talking to you. Stand quickly, stand quickly, stand quickly. Stand quickly, stand quickly. Stand quickly, stand quickly. Glory to God. Hallelujah. $72. I want you to get it and stand all over the building. Business owners, ministries, people who just believe the word of God. And know that it is wise and it is right and it is a principle to sow seed to God. There are at least 10 more of you today. The Lord is talking to you. Please don't sit there and try to say it's the devil. It's not the devil. Sow that seed right now. $72. I want to challenge your faith today. Glory to God. Stand, stand, stand. If you're going to stand, stand quickly. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Wealth and riches shall be in your house. Glory to God. Wealth and riches shall be in your house. While people are laying off and closing jobs, unexpected checks are going to hit your mailbox. I was in North Carolina Thursday, man of God, and I told this lady that was sitting on the first row, I said, I see some things that's been held up for you and your family. And God told me to tell you that this week, he's going to release those finances that have been held up. I got a text from the pastor's wife on my way here. And she said, woman of God, the lady that you prophesied to, on Friday, her husband got a call that some checks that have been held up had been mailed to their houses. I'm trying to tell you today, saints of God, God is performing his word. And it ain't going to take him long to do what he has already done. There are a few more, few more people in here today. I want to challenge you. There are at least five more. I see you standing, woman of God. There are at least five more people that will say, I want to get in on this. I want to sow this seed in this service where God restored me, where God brought me back to my first love. I see you standing, woman of God. I see you standing, woman of God. Come on, people of God. Come on, move out on faith. Trust God. Believe God. Stand on. I see you standing. I see you standing. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. The water is troubled. And I'm telling you, there are blessings all around us as we give. Your meal barrel will never run dry in this season. Your cruise of oil will never run dry as we trust God. I want every other person that can and will to get a seed at least of $27. And if you go above and beyond that, I want you to get it. I want you to stand quickly. Stand quickly. Stand quickly. I've given you all that I have today. Stand quickly. Glory to God. Move as fast as you want God to move for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Stand quickly. I don't have $72, but I want to give $27. I want to give $37. Stand right where you are. Hallelujah. There's a sweet, sweet spirit of the Lord in this place. And I know that it's the presence of the Lord. And I know that it's the presence of the Lord. Get that seed and stand all over the building if you're giving. Come on, get it quickly. If you have anything at all to give, I'm waiting on you to unify the house. If you say, I have nothing at all to give, but I want to stand.